Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and I am excited to share this card set I made using the My Favorite Things Sketched Blooms stamp set. I couldn't decide on one card so I decided to make six. So to start off with when doing something like this, the easiest thing I find is to work in sections, like do everything at once. So I did all my stamping at once and I'm stamping the images onto some Tim Holtz Distress watercolor cardstock and I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'm stamping onto the textured side of the cardstock and I really like the VersaFine for this because it stamps super crisply, super black and it's waterproof. So I went through and stamped all the flowers in different ways on each of the six pieces. I had all sorts of ideas running through my head so I wanted to kind of create um, rather than do like a mass production of six of the same cards, I wanted to do six different cards yet with the same supplies. So in the middle of this, I decided to create a few masks um, just because a couple of the images I ended up stamping, I wanted to mask off um, some of them. So I stamped the flowers onto some post-it tape and then trimmed those out with my scissors. And then, yeah, just going on and stamping the flowers, doing different... Um, different layouts, different styles, you know, stamping them all over on one. On this one here, I just stamped three in the center and I used the post-it tape to mask off the bottom area so it looks so they're all, you know, on the same line and really just had fun with it. <laughs> it's something that anyone can do and it, a set like this, it gives you a lot of options. So I was really just playing around. I think I ended up spending a couple days technically on these like off and on um just because kids life whatever and then I would just come back to it and I made a huge mess on top of it if you guys could have seen my desk when I was done so I had so many ideas running through my head with this stamp set I love this set when I first got it I couldn't wait to use it um and then I had to hold off because it was sold out for the longest time so it should hopefully be you know in stock now when I post this video um the masks I'd cut out I save I put them onto the backing sheet that the stamps come on because there's no sense tossing them after using them only once or twice so you can use them multiple times and then for the watercoloring I did messy watercoloring. I didn't want to, you know, be perfect with these and fill in the lines. Plus, again, the images themselves are kind of more hand-drawn looking, you know, looser, freer. So it just lends itself to something like this. And what I, all I did was I just picked up the color from my Peerless watercolor packs. I've done a separate video on how I organized them. I just cut down the sheets and glued small pieces onto watercolor paper symbols up and I'm just picking up the color with my water brush and then applying the color to the stamped images really really simple um, here and there I do a tiny little bit of blending like on this um, particular card I actually you know picked up a little bit of other colors and blended a couple together but for the most part I just got the color on I didn't do a whole lot of you know fancy blending or shading or anything like that it was more just a matter of adding color then with this one, I added the color and then decided I wanted a little bit of something for a background just because it looked too plain like this. I was just looking at it and I'm like, it just, it's missing something. So I picked up the green, one of the green Peerless watercolors and I'm just using the stamp packaging and added a bunch of water to it to create a bit of a wash and just using the same little water brush, I just added um, the color into the background and then added a little bit of blue to it and it just gave it, you know, it kind of finished it off a little bit more. So I went through and did each um, stamped panel with the Peerless watercolors, not really letting anything um, dry if the colors bled into each other. I was totally okay with that. I just wanted it to be loose and fun and stuck to sort of similar-ish color themes within each card. And then when I was done, I couldn't resist adding some splatters. So I did the same thing. I just picked up the color from the Peerless, mixed it on, onto the stamp packaging. Um, anything non-porous would work. Picked it up with my water brush and then flicked the water brush against my fingers to create the splatters across everything. And then I set everything aside, aside to dry. And then I pulled out a bunch <laughs> of sentiment die cuts or dynamics and sentiment sets all from MFT. I just grabbed a big variety of them because again, I decided I would make this kind of like an all occasion card set. Something this would make a really great gift. 
I really like doing things like that, like giving it to people, giving um, a variety of cards, you know, in a similar theme, but for different occasions to someone like my mom or other people that I know, um, just as a nice gift for them to use. So I kept everything somewhat similar in the sense that I used, you know, some black cardstock, some Razzleberry cardstock, um, some orange fizz, black licorice, or white. And then I also added a strip. I used only one pattern paper and it was just this black and white stripe pattern paper from the MFT. I'm not even sure exactly. Oh, Dots and Stripes Neutral Pack. And then for my embellishment, I'm using some May Arts um, natural burlap string, which I really liked as it, again, kept the continuity between each card. I have, you know, used it on every single card panel but I used it in different ways. Some of them I wrapped around, some like this, I would wrap so several lengths of it around the card. And then I did one more piece that I'd tie in a bow. Um, it was just fun to do different sorts of things with the same supplies to create a slightly different look and yet have all that continuity. So I didn't bother showing every little bit just because this video would be way, way longer. Plus, again, I was all over the place, as always. <laughs> but yeah, I die cut some sentiments, stamped and embossed some sentiments, just depending on what piece I was working on and what sentiment I wanted to use. And like I said, I just wanted a good variety. So for this one, I just stamped the Feel Better stamp onto some black licorice cardstock and then heat embossed it with some white embossing powder. And then I trimmed that down with my paper trimmer and added some, um, the burlap string, I decided to wrap around the ends of the sentiment there because there's just that little bit of blank space. So I was like, mm, that'll be like a little bit of a different look compared to the other ones. So I just wrapped it around the end there and then tied it in a little bow. And then I ended up adding it to the card panel with that same pattern paper. And then I just added a strip of that Razzleberry cardstock, which you can see that I had already cut there. So it just gave everything that little extra something having this string. I really like this burlap string. It's got all these like natural fibers that kind of stick out with it. And it's just got that kind of earthy look. And yet it went with these. I thought it would just fit with, you know, the flowers and everything. So I went on and again, I because I did all the stamping at once. I did all the watercoloring at once. And then I did all the sentiments at once. So by keeping everything kind of in the same um, you know, section, it made it a lot easier to do this many cards. Technically all could have been done in one sitting, just my life. Usually I have like six sittings to do something like this. So for this card, um, I stamped and embossed the word you. It's really, it's kind of hard to see on, um, camera, but I'd stamped it and stamped it with a verse mark ink onto the raspberry cardstock and embossed it with a detailed black embossing powder. I could have stamped it just with black ink, but I wanted the raised look of the embossing powder. And then I added a strip of the pattern paper here and um, glued it in place and then flip this over, trim off that excess. And then I die cut the word thank, which is all separate letters. And before tossing out the scrap paper that I die cut it from, I used that to adhere these letters so that they are perfectly spaced and all straight across. Because for a second I was like, crap, how am I going to get these all, you know, lined up without spending a ton of time doing that? Because that's one thing I don't like um, when I die cut, like just individual letters for my cards is it just sometimes can take so long to, you know, get them in place. So I was like, oh, so I, yeah, held the scrap in place, adhered the letters, and then peeled that scrap right off of it. And I've got my letters in place, perfectly spaced and in a perfectly straight line. So yay me. And then of course I wrapped around the Mayart's burlap string again, wrapped it a couple times around and then tied it in a bow. And for this one, um, the bow was kind of looking a little wonky sometimes when you're dealing with strings and ribbons and that sort of thing. Um, they kind of have a mind of their own. So with this, what worked really, really well is since the bow, it was basically kind of flopping downwards and I was like, eh, I don't like that. So I just added a little dab of Ranger's multi-medium matte adhesive right behind where the knot is there. And then I'm holding that in place with my finger. And while that's drying, I could have just set an acrylic block on there, but I'm just holding it in place with my finger while it dries and then figured out where I wanted to add um, the U that I had stamped and embossed and figured I wanted to add it right below um, the end of the word there. So I just applied more of the same adhesive and held that in place. And then later I just had set it aside and I put like a couple of acrylic blocks on there just to hold everything down. 
and then the bow looks perfect, the U is on there, and it's adhered, and it was all good. So then once I'm done all the sentiments, I'm going to do the card bases. So I cut down all my card um, sheets of cardstock to four and a quarter by 11 inches and score them all at five and a half. So they're all top folding A2 size cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And I just use my ATG gun to uh, apply a generous amount of adhesive to all of these panels um, because a lot of them have um, the string, everything else, so they're a bit bumpy. So I use a good amount of adhesive to adhere all these to the card bases. And then, of course, as a final step, because you can't just leave the insides blank, um, I opened up all the cards and on the inside, I just stamped a few of the flowers again with um, black ink. Just kept it really, really simple. I just used um, MFT's Black Licorice Dye Ink just on the inside. Just because stamping with VersaFine on regular cardstock, it takes longer to dry. And I didn't want to smear up the inside. So I just used MFT's Black Dye Ink, stamped the flowers on the inside, and that finished it off. So I will have links to the mess. <laughs> I use quite a few different products for the sentiments and that. But I will have links to everything in the description box below the video. There will also be a link to my blog post and I'll post the pictures of all these. So check that out below if any of that interests you. And then check out my blog post um, if you want to just see the pictures on my blog. And then there'll be a picture links to all the supplies used, all that sort of info. So check that out below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping my videos, as well as all of the awesome comments. I love to respond to them and read them all. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.